Welcome to the awards ceremony. This is an important part of our annual uh, meeting and, and uh, as much this year as any other. And it's always a privilege and honor to present the IPAC Awards of, of Excellence, which recognize the work of civil servants who've made a significant contribution to public interest. After a thorough, and I can say exacting, review by our National Awards and Recognition Committee, we streamlined our awards into four categories. Emerging leader, established leader, distinguished service in mental health promotion, and innovation. We received more nominations this year than in any previous year, with more than 100 nominations across these four categories. Helping to make these awards possible are our sponsors. Thank you to our platinum sponsor, Deloitte, and our gold sponsor, LifeWorks. Here to present... And fittingly, here to present the Emerging and Established Leader Awards is Shannon Lundquist, Federal Account Leader, Deloitte Canada. Thank you, Giles, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I just want to start off and say, don't you think this has been an incredible conference, whether you've been virtual or live, and I want to thank all of the IPAC and other volunteers. It takes dozens of people. Deloitte is proud to sponsor these awards to new and established leaders, showcasing the incredible impact that leaders and teams are having on Canada, Canadians, newcomers, and Indigenous peoples. The IPAC Award for Emerging Leaders is given to promising new leaders in public administration who have served for five years or less in their profession and whose work has made a significant impact to the public interest. The finalists of the Emerging Leader category are Victor Castellino, Supply Chain Modernization Branch, Ontario Ministry of Health, Lauren Dunn, Mental Health and Addictions Division, Ontario Men Men Ministry of Health, Christine Leger, Statistics Canada, and Cassandra White, Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada. And the first winner in this category is Cassandra White, Innovation Science and Economic Development. Cassandra led is ensuring Canadians have access to critical vaccines, therapeutics, and other life-saving medicines. Working across departments and agencies, ICED is implementing a biomanufacturing and life sciences strategy to plan for our future. <laughs> and that includes partnerships with the world's top biopharmaceutical firms. Cassandra White, an energetic new executive with a strong policy background, yeah. has been a key player in ICED's work towards this goal. Cassandra and her team helped to develop Canada's biomanufacturing and life sciences strategy and finalized the Memorandum of Understanding with Moderna. She recruited and trained a highly qualified and diverse team and created a positive culture of openness, diversity, and inclusivity. Cass's empathy and kindness towards her team and partners are extraordinary. Her approach to leadership was especially impactful during the global pandemic which challenged so many of us as we struggled to balance work and home life priorities. The work leading up to the government's endorsement of the strategy and the execution of the MOU with Moderna was a masterclass in public service values and ethics. Cassandra was central in bringing together the talents, input, and sometimes diverging views of colleagues across government to develop a coherent whole of government strategy. She brings a fresh, bright, collaborative approach to policy development. Cass took the time and put in the effort to build strong and trusting relationships, work that is already paying dividends. With Cassandra as one of our emerging leaders, Canada is in great hands. Congratulations to Cassandra White, IPAC's 2022 Emerging Leader. I would now like to introduce Anil Arora, Chief Statistician of Canada, to speak about our next award winner. Thank you very much. It's uh, really a pleasure for me to be here today to have this opportunity to present the 2022 IPAC Emerging Leader Award to my colleague, Christine Leger. 
Um, how many of you filled out the census form? <laughs> if you did, you should thank Christine. If you didn't, come see me afterwards. <laughs> um, but seriously, uh, I think if you understood the importance of that exercise and what it means to Canada and all the decisions that we make based on that information, well, guess what? You owe a little bit of that thanks to Christine and her work. I know she'll say that all that goes to the team, but she really uh, has been just an incredible leader. The director of our census communications, she's played an extremely important role in envisioning and executing communications activities that led to an extremely successful 2021 census of population and the census of agriculture. So in the midst of this worldwide pandemic, Christine was able to develop, lead and execute such an engaging communications plan that was able to reach a historical record level of Canadians and all that in a contactless environment. In a time crunch, she led a massive campaign to have stakeholders and organizations to spread the word about the census. She developed award-winning advertising and social media campaigns, turning the census into a cultural phenomena and as well provided support for responding to questions from citizens, academics, researchers, politicians, and the like. This collaborative approach contributed to a record 84% of Canadians filling out their census form online with a total overall response rate, and think about that, in the middle of a pandemic of 98%. Christine can, is, is really one of those people that has a can-do attitude, is it, and that attitude is infectious to her colleagues at every level, including yours truly. She's admired by her team for her hard work, her laser focus, but mostly for her humanity and her passion. She's a true example of an empathetic leader, and I'm proud to have her in our agency, and I know that she'll continue to have a very successful career in the public service. So I want you to look out for her as she moves on and creates even more havoc and creativity all throughout. So congratulations, Christine. Once upon a time, there lived a fearless leader named Christine Leger from Census Communications Land. But what makes her so fearless? As the man began his search, he stumbled on a gentleman in chief named Albert Novikov. I must know, what makes Christine Leger such a great leader? One word to describe Christine that will be trusting. Christine enabled our team to implement its innovative ideas, make decisions, and resolve problems without micromanaging. Her leadership style contributed to Statistics Canada, not only achieving the 98% response rate, but also turning the 2021 census into a national cultural phenomenon. The man then meets Director General Janice Keenan. I must know, what makes Christine Leger such a great leader? She is caring. What I admire most about Christine is her true people skills. She creates a sense of belonging for her team and for those around her, based on her own values and the values of the public service. The man then meets Assistant Chief Statistician Stéphane Dufour. I must know, what makes Christine Leger such a great leader? She perseveres. Christine and her team played a critical role in envisioning, developing, realigning, and executing the communications plan which helped lead to an historical successful 2021 census despite the challenges brought by the COVID-19 pandemic. The man then meets Assistant Chief Statistician Jacques Futur. I must know, what makes Christine Leger such a fearless leader? She's a pioneer. Christine oversaw the production of nearly a thousand communication products. Her team propelled community supporters, influencers, indigenous organizations, municipalities, associations, teachers and academics, military and emergency support workers, new Canadians and businesses to promote the census and expand their reach. The man then meets Chief Rania Abdullah. She is fearless. She led the census communications team with over 70 employees as a new director in a pandemic. She is a bright star who shines in every aspect of her work. She is admired for her humanity, perseverance, support, hard work, and laser focus. Never afraid to roll up her sleeves to get the work done. A true leader in every aspect.
Thank you, Anil, and congratulations, Christine. My next award, the IPAC Award for Established Leaders, is awarded to leaders in public administration who have made substantive achievements over many years and whose work has made a significant impact to the public interest. The finalists are Catherine Gates, Community Service Delivery Division, Manitoba Department of Families, David Lamb, on Ontario Ministry of Health, Linda Ogilvie, Corporate Health Care, Ontario Correctional Services, Kevin Richter, B BC Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure, Charlotte Weta, Business Transformation Solid Waste, City of Toronto, and Frank Vermaeten, Assessment Benefit and Service Branch, Canada Revenue Agency. And this year's Established Leader Award goes to Kevin Richter, BC Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure. The ultimate public servant. He is a strong people leader and a committed community builder. Over his 30 years of experience, he's touched every corner of British Columbia. He's service-oriented, hardworking, and incredibly passionate. It's these attributes plus his operational and engineering experience that really positioned him to lead what was probably the greatest challenge of his career and one of the greatest challenges facing all of us, the 2021 Atmospheric River events. It was a calamity that caused uh, millions of dollars worth of damage, not only to our infrastructure, but it affected the lives of many British Columbians. We had phone calls at three in the morning from Kevin Richter, uh, we have a problem, can you help us? Uh, and, and the reply from the industry en masse was, where do you want us, when do you want us? Thanks to our, our contractors, they mobilized immediately, but the magnitude was, was incredible. Because we recognize that every day that the Highway 1, Highway 5 corridor were closed, we were losing over $180 million of economic commerce. And people were working nonstop, around the clock, 24-7. And everyone was doing it very respectfully with First Nations monitors, making sure that it was safe, we had no accidents, and it all paid off. Within days, we had Highway 1 on the island and, and Highway 3 open. Within weeks, we had Highway 1 through the Fraser Valley open. And then we had the Coquihalla. In 35 days, we got the Coquihalla open again. It was an incredible testament of what people can do to bear down when the call is made to get things done. And, you know, I think this is a, a new page that's being turned in British Columbia of working with First Nations, working together with First Nations and plotting a path together and forging a new pathway forward. One of Kevin's legacies is his commitment to reconciliation with Indigenous people. His thoughtful, respectful and authentic approach to reconciliation combined with his action will create lasting impacts with Indigenous partners uh, for years to come. Kevin was a person first. So he did, you know, ask about our community, did ask about our, how the engagement work was doing. Uh, it was really important on the engagement with our people because free prior informed consent is, you know, the minimum human rights standards under the UN Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. So he understood that and he also uh, was respectful uh, to our jurisdiction and to our inherent title and rights. So I think showing up firstly with uh, that uh, understanding, I think, is important in dealing with our nations and our people. But there's a lot of pride in working for government. There's a lot of pride of building that bridge, of maintaining that road, of reopening the Coquihalla. Those people wanted to do that. And it's a neat industry to be in, but it's also neat that you've got a leader like Kevin recognizes that and, and is part of that uh, enjoyment and celebrating the successes. You know, there's hundreds of thousands of people each day travel our roads and highways to get to and from, to move goods, and even just for travel and tourism. Um, I feel that the roads are important and the work that we do to preserve them and to make them safer are key to the success of British Columbia.
who will serve as the Mental Health Promotion Award. Please welcome to the stage Kin Choi from LifeWorks. Thank you very much. Uh, LifeWork is so proud to sponsor this award. Uh, we, it's such a great partner for us. Uh, we recognize the importance of mental health, obviously, and look forward to, uh, to highlighting the achievements of the public servants that have made over these uh, really trust, uh, trust trying past few years. So the award for Distinguished Service in Mental Health Promotion recognizes an individual or organization with an outstanding record supporting individuals or community with creative and sustained mental health programming. The finalists are Jessa Barber, British Columbia Wildlife Services, sorry, Wildfire Services, Susan Kyle, Ministry of Attorney General, Criminal Law Division of Ontario, Sean Leggett, Manitoba Mental Health and Community Wellness, uh, Mental Health and Addictions Division for the Ministry of Ontario, Jody Peterson uh, and Megan Bryson, Alberta Ministry of Justice. For this award, uh, we have two winners, the team from Mental Health and Addictions Division's Ontario Ministry of Health, and Jessa Barber of the BC Wildfire Services. First, we'll honor the Mental Health and Addictions Division at Ontario Ministry of Health, which set up an extensive virtual mental health services during the COVID uh, period for underserved populations and those at risk. Let's see the video. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the Ontario Ministry of Health quickly pivoted to virtual mental health and addiction services so that thousands of people could continue to receive essential supports. This despite service demands surging up to three times pre-pandemic levels. Staff worked with service providers to roll out training, best practices and technology to support this new approach. The result was that more than 95% of community-based mental health and addiction services, including counseling, therapy, and peer supports, continue to be delivered despite the challenges posed by the pandemic. Plus de 95% des services de santé mentale et de lutte contre les dépendances en milieu communautaire, y compris des services de counseling, de thérapie et de soutien par les pairs, ont continué à être offerts malgré la pandémie. By building this virtual infrastructure, we now have innovative services to manage anxiety and depression, as well as digital interventions to empower people to overcome problem drinking, drug misuse, and smoking. These milestone successes are helping to reduce barriers to timely, accessible care for Ontarians in need. Come on up. Now we would like to recognize the work of Jessa Barber of the British Columbia Wildfire Services. Cue her picture. Here we go. Jessa expanded the concept of total worker health within BC Fire Wildfire Service, changing the culture of mental health support for wildfire workers. For over a hundred years, the BC Wildfire Service has managed wildfire on the landscape of British Columbia. From the Pacific Ocean to diverse mountain ranges, our province represents over 900,000 square kilometers of natural beauty and is home to over 5 million people. My name is Kyle Young. I'm the manager of organizational development for the BC Wildfire Service and I'm uh, based out of Kamloops. Since I started in 2005 and, and what it used to look like is we were involved in a lot more remote fires and, and they didn't impact people as much as, as they are now and, and having three of our 
our most devastating fire seasons in the last five years has really shown um, the mental uh, toll it will take on our staff, but also um, how the, how we're dealing with it. We're seeing more interface fires and, and the effects it's having on more than just our staff, but um, British Columbians as a whole. The mental health is one of our leading injuries. Um, and, and we're not just seeing physical injuries. More people are, are speaking out about mental health and, and it's comfortable. We're allowing that to happen. And, and we're trying to put things in place that will help support them. And this nomination for, for Jessa and what she's been able to do is support our staff moving forward in um, making sure they have the resources available. Jess is really, um, she, she started an audit on the standard, the national standard for psychological and mental health um, for Canada. And she started that for PC wildfire and, and has done the initial audit, which um, gives us a key starting point to the baseline of where the organization is, but also shows us where we need to get to. Our final category in this the award for innovation, the IPAC Award for Innovation recognizes an individual or organization that has produced an exceptional change or new way of doing things that addresses the public interest. Our finalists in this innovation award are the Capacity Planning and Analytics Division, the Ministry of Health, Ontario, Clean BC, Real Property Division, Ministry of Citizen Services, British Columbia, Rachel Levin, Strategic Policy, Ontario Energy Board. Western Hospital Team, Health PEI. Christopher Wu, Office of the Independent Policy Review, Police Review Director, Ontario. And the winner is the Western Hospital Team at Health PEI. Western Hospital was in a crunch. The same physician staffing shortages felt across the country were compounded by its rural setting and upcoming retirements. Alberton PEI has a population of less than 1,200 people. Chronic inpatient doctor shortages threatened the hospital's closure. So Western Hospital innovated. It partnered with Maple, a virtual care technology startup. Western Hospital used the technology to create a new way for physicians to complete their daily patient rounds called hollow rounding. A nurse wheels a cart packed with virtual care technology from patient to patient, offering treatment from a physician through Maple. It's a model that's since been adopted by hospitals across the country. The team used the same technology to take pressure off the hospital's emergency department. Low acuity patients were invited to seek treatment through a virtual pathway created with Maple, taking strain off the local staff. Patient response was overwhelmingly positive. Wait times were reduced from up to eight hours to just 10 minutes in some cases. The project team applied what it learned in the hospital to the growing number of patients on the island without a family doctor. It's since built and scaled a provincial program to provide virtual physician access to nearly 25,000 patients, some of whom have been without a family doctor for as long as a decade. The retirement of a family physician in a small town of Tignish threatened to make access to healthcare even worse in an already underserviced area. Using virtual care technology, the doctor offered to continue a once a week clinic from his retirement home in Ireland. This continued for several months until a locum was established. These innovations at Health BEI have been spread and celebrated across the country and beyond. This team and our province continues to explore novel ideas and drive innovation to improve quality access to care for all Islanders.
Oh, good. That was quick. Oh, just a second. Congratulations. Well, thank you so much for joining us to honour the outstanding public service achievements accomplished by the award winners among us today. To the finalists, your superb work certainly made the jury's job quite challenging. I can attest to that. So congratulations to you all. We also thank all those who nominated candidates. They made this possible. And as we said, there were over 100, uh, there were over 100 nominations. And again, to all the sponsors, your generosity and support allow us to recognize the work of nominees and to celebrate their outstanding contributions. And now, I'll ask you to join us at the IPAC Annual General Meeting, which is taking place right here in the Metropolitan Ballroom, Centre and West. Thank you. <laughs>